so it's time for another gardening week and I am planting corn salad which isn't looking too happy to be honest although the root systems are pretty good uh, into this new bed and this was actually my oldest raised bed well, there's actually three of them which I originally built probably 15 years ago for strawberries and uh, I built it from old bookcase shelves and it lasted untreated wood for 15 years I mean it was completely rotten by the time I replaced it and everything was kind of built around it so this little retaining wall here was built around it and uh, so now I've replaced it, I've actually been able to build it, this new bed, to fit. Which means it's pretty big by comparison with the original bed. I think it's probably, I don't know, close to twice the size. I made it a bit wider and obviously filled in all the gaps in between the three beds and took it right to the edges everywhere. Um, which is a real bonus because this so far touch wood is free of club root so it means we can move more of our brassicas home and uh, yeah that is a real bonus you know given that my plot is basically all club root now so anyway i'm planting corn salad and then I'm going to plant, interplant into that corn salad, um, salad onions in the gaps in between. And that bed there is going to be garlic, which is going to be a big dedicated garlic bed, the sort of light we've never had before. And we've never had space to do a, a big so garlic bed. Every other year, really, our garlic's kind of been interplanted into other beds most of the time. And the timing works quite nicely, so this will probably be red cabbage um, after these onions and uh, corn salad are harvested. In fact, the corn salad will be finished by the end of February, and then the salad onions will grow on and they'll be finished by May. And then the first batch of red cabbage will go in, in May. And then the second batch will be interplanted into the garlic at the beginning of June. And, uh, and then the garlic will be sort of harvested around it. So, yeah, I'm, it's great. I'm very fussy with this. The problem I had was filling it, but fortunately that bed over there is uh, is going to have a greenhouse built on top of it. And so I had all the compost that was in that bed to get rid of, and so I put it into this bed. And also that little compost bin there, which we use for our kitchen scraps, so it's basically a worm bin. That bed was, that, that was full. So I took about half of that out. So the only challenge, as you can see, is getting to this little bit here, which is a bit of a tricky reach. I don't know whether I could quite make it. Yep, I just made it. Certainly use your flexibility when you're planting in raised beds and try not to stand on the soil. I mean, I don't mind standing on the soil at all, but uh, it's very sticky right now. And I don't really want to stand in sticky soil. So, so now I'm just dibbing the holes for the salad onions. And hopefully, as you can see, I'm giving them a really generous spacing once this corn salad lamb's lettuce has been harvested. So hopefully they'll grow on 
really strongly given all this space because right now they look really sickly but one of the benefits of having a shady kitchen garden is you also have quite a sheltered kitchen garden from the high winds and you know I always think it's wind chill that really causes the most problems with salad onions growing over winter so you know th this garden is you know relatively warm by comparison with the allotments always maybe a degree maybe even two degrees warmer but it's so much less windy even though we're much closer to the actual sea here um you know we're about I don't know, four minutes walk away or something from the seafront um, you know, all these houses in the way really work well to break up the wind. And obviously I'm, there's a wall here next to me and uh, all these buildings here as well. And the prevailing wind direction is this way, so northwest. So this bed has always been pretty good for salad onions, even the ones I'm growing, which are North Holland Blood Red and Lilia. I've actually not done North Holland Blood Red over winter, but Lilia, another red onion that's very similar, has always done quite well. I'm not sure how well it'll do, would do on the allotment. But anyway, we need a lot of salad onions. I've got a lot planted already. I'm planting a lot more and uh, yeah, I'm reasonably confident. I mean, last year it was down to minus 10 here in the kitchen garden and they still pulled through and gave us a lovely harvest in April, May. So I'm planting two varieties. These look lovely. These are the guardsmen sown 3rd of September and these look awful <laughs> and these are the Lilia and the North Holland Blood Red and those were actually sown 6th of August <laughs> it's hard to believe really isn't it that uh, those guardsmen were sown almost a, well a month later and they look so much better and also these have got all these little bits of grass seed in them very annoying, I'm going to have to weed all that out first. I'm actually doing quite a lot less interplanting this year of salad onions because what happened to me last year was I planted a lot under cover in low tunnels and coal frames and also in the polytunnel and they grew fine but the problem is the plants they were interplanted with some of them didn't grow that well and so the end result was that i basically had all these salad onions kind of orphaned in beds that i wanted to replant but i couldn't replant them because the salad onions were in the way and we needed those salad onions so this year i've done dedicated beds for most of them I don't need to worry about doing them outside like this, obviously, because, you know, the um, I, I can't replant uh, until May anyway into, into these beds. So, but it's the undercover beds, which I could otherwise have sort of replanted in December or January or February, um, which ended up having to wait until... I'd got the salad onions harvested, which meant I was kind of replanting in March, which was quite frustrating. Well, I'm really pleased to have got these in. As I said, they just weren't looking very healthy and uh, everything really seems to improve once it's in the ground. And I'll just show you the uh, ones that I planted last week, I think. Uh, and you could just see, you know, just such a radical difference, basically, uh, in just a week in terms of how healthy they look. Although they did look just marginally healthier when I planted them out as well, but not hugely, hugely better. 
So, uh, yeah, and I'll just mention garlic as well. So, you know, I've seen some videos of people like panicking about, oh, I've got to get the garlic in in October. And, it, you know, it really doesn't matter with garlic. I mean, it does almost all of its growing next year. Uh, it's just going to put a few roots down and maybe a little bit of top growth this year. But uh, it's not hugely important uh, when you put it in any time in October, early November, and it's going to be fine. So these onions, they grew on top of my IBC tanks and so did the corn salad. And I noticed when I was clearing these module cells up that uh, there was little snails in the gaps in between these cells. Obviously I've got rid of them now. But uh, yeah, even right up on top of my IBC tank, snails still explored sufficiently to find um, something to eat so maybe that's why they suffered a little bit that had snails eating them for a month or so uh, nothing surprising here this week i'm sowing seeds i pretty much always sowing seeds and that is the beauty of uh, grow lights although these are spinach two different varieties rubino and responder and I don't need to accelerate the growth of these at all because so these were once they've germinated they'll just germinate in the house uh, they'll go in the polytunnel on the little polytunnel shelf and yeah so these are really being grown for a baby leaf harvest in February for salads and then a mature leaf harvest uh, in sort of March April for cooking leaves um, although you know some of them I might harvest small leaves as well um, it depends on whether I well it just depends on how other things grow and so I'm going to put two seeds in each module just to guarantee that something germinates but it means I'm going to have to space them quite a bit further apart than I normally do because with spinach that I'm growing over winter I, I plant it quite close together because I want to uh, you know because the leaves are not going to grow very big and the plants are obviously not going to grow very big so um, but as soon as you're starting to talk about harvesting in spring well then you're talking about really rapid growth and big leaves and if you plant them close together obviously they're going to get all crowded out so you know probably about 10 inches or something is the right density for something that's going to be harvested in spring it does mean that it does look a bit empty uh, in winter but that's just the price you pay for optimizing your spring harvest And for this succession, I normally sow red kitten. But we get through a lot of spinach in our family. And as a result, it's costing me quite a bit in red kitten seeds. Um, and I was having actually some problems getting really good germination. So I decided to try out these two spinaches from moles because obviously they're mole cells in huge quantities and just these two packets are going to last me all year um, so yeah so that's the reason that I've switched over I don't know whether they'll be as good as red kitten in spring but we'll give them a go it's okay at the moment because we've got some autumn sowings of them Oh, so I have been busy with the last part of my pre-planting ritual which is the spreading of the manure. This is the only uh, mulch of manure that this polytunnel will get until next year. I like to do it now. Um, I just, you know, I have more time now than I do in spring 
and uh, these beds are never as clear you know they're never completely clear like they are at this time of year in spring there's always some existing planting you know they it's too time is just don't work to clear a polytunnel in spring ready for planting your tomatoes and peppers and cucumbers and all that sort of thing so now's the time I am using and I have used for a few years now this farmyard manure I find it's really good I've never had any weed seed growth in it and uh, although it's a bit clumpy it needs a bit of effort to sort of break it up and make it nice and friable it's uh, yeah it's pretty it's pretty good stuff and obviously I like everything else I do most things with my hands sometimes you get a kind of lump that's just not gonna break down sweep that up later so yeah it's uh, it's a strangely satisfying activity to uh, get this bed in good condition and uh, it's a little once you empty the packets of this stuff it's a, a little bit methane-y so uh, keep the doors open <laughs> um, and I won't be actually planting into this bed for a few days now just uh, give it time to settle down a bit and I'll probably sprinkle you know a handful of slug pellets over the whole bed um, just to see how many slugs there are around um, I'm hoping not very many <laughs> because this polytunnel has been fairly dry through uh, summer and I've only just started recently to re water yeah rehydrate the beds which means a lot of watering but fortunately there's been a lot of rain so yeah that's pretty much it all done I think I bought my seedlings from the conservatory into the polytunnel get better light here than they do in the conservatory and uh, also just sort of adapt them to the uh, correct climatic conditions and it's also just a lot easier to water in here than it is in the conservatory so uh, yeah hopefully all of these or most of them will get planted out in here pretty soon right so i'll quickly just work you through this harvest so you can see what's going on and you know a lot of it's the same every week so i'll try not to dwell too much on it we have started picking uh, the apples and we're going to start putting those into store pretty soon i've also got some really lovely pears under there uh, there's a sample of the pears uh, these are invincible actually and i was a bit unsure about them but actually they turned out to be really great pears um, skin's a bit tough but if you take sort of 70 percent of the skin off leave a little bit because it's super healthy then uh, yeah they work really nicely last of the tomatoes We've made loads of passata this week, just finishing off those tomatoes. Still got quite a few chilli peppers though. Still working our way through the potatoes from the store, which are in theory our summer potatoes. We haven't even started uh, harvesting our main crop potatoes yet. All this other stuff from the store. So yellow onions, garlic, elephant garlic, shallots, and just like little used now uh, onions. Uh, all of our main crop onions are still in the store but uh, we have had some losses it's not been ideal weather really for storing onions it's a bit been a bit too warm so we have had some mold growth I think we've lost about 10 out of about 350 so far so a little cauliflower it's not, it's not been great cauliflower weather uh, this autumn and so that is probably the last of the cauliflowers uh, in fact the last of the flowering brassicas that we're going to see until probably sort of December time when purple spreading broccoli starts uh, just a few examples of the beetroot not done the full beetroot harvest yet still picking little little uh, 
red cabbages, saving all the nice big ones for later. Just a few little samples of the squashes, which are looking really nice, even though they are small. Um, last of the courgettes, not the last of the peppers though. We've got loads of peppers still to pick, but even so, that's still quite a nice harvest of peppers. Um, still got lots and lots, obviously, of parsnips, uh, but that is the penultimate harvest from the summer, well, no, the, the early parsnip head, let's call it. Had one so far, red cabbage split and start to go to seed, but that is the result. That is such a gorgeous little cabbage. I am saving that one for myself. Um, I had to start picking some of the Brussels sprouts, which is a shame, because uh, I really like to keep my Brussels sprouts for winter, not because they taste better. It's just that that's kind of the way that I've managed my harvests. So unfortunately, some of them, they're just, well, as you can see from the quality of them, they're not looking fantastic. So any ones that I don't think will last for another couple of months, I'm just starting to pick those over the next couple of weeks. Um, but 80, 90% of them look really nice quality and look like they're going to stand really well into winter. Summer carrots, still got one more pick of the summer carrots and then I'll look forward to starting with the autumn carrots because we've really got to get through all those. Um, tatsoi, more tatsoi, uh, salad onions, salad rocket, celery, cooking spinach, leeks, and these are just two samples of the storage squash uh, from Regino and um, Crown Prince, and they are in the conservatory curing at the moment. Last of the summer leeks. Last of the cucumbers. Just a few uh, turnips and radish. I'm actually thinking I'm going to stop growing turnips and radish. We, because of the problems I've got with club root, I normally kind of interplant radish and turnips all over the place, and obviously they're in the brassica family as well. So potentially, I'm just kind of stimulating club root everywhere I go uh, by interplanting these everywhere. So I think I'm just going to stick with just keeping my brassicas in sort of dedicated, uh, rotated beds, um, and have fewer beds growing brassicas basically is what it comes down to. And so something has to be sacrificed and I think it's going to be those. Um, I mean, I have got 35 different, not varieties, types of food on this table right now. So yeah, you know, I can do without a few turnips and radishes. It's not going to bother me. Um, and then we've got the salad mixes and salad mixes are quite nice at the moment. Got lots of this lovely red um, spinach in them, as well as all these sort of frizzy lettuces and all the sort of classic lettuces and things. So yeah, they're looking pretty nice and I'll just make up those salad mixes so you can see them now. Uh, all finished. And that is pretty much it. It's a good weekly table. Just about exactly what I want to be seeing at this time of year. Uh, everybody's eating a bit more fresh veg now than they were in summer. And so, you know, I can afford to have a nice big table like this. And uh, yeah, we'll get through all this in a week, our family. So onwards to next week. My name's Steve. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel. And I'll see you soon.